we got our run. Oh, now it's now we're good to go. So yeah, you'll notice that all of the companies here um, they sell directly to consumers um, for the most part, and they they make their own products. Um, and it's it's fairly easy to determine the price of products and the inputs for these products. So um, the inputs being like you know like general orders, the inputs are things like steel, leather for the car seat. Things are easy for you to identify. So when it comes to that part of the project for you to gather data and analyze it, you will be able to do that. If you were to do something like an insurance company, it might be more difficult. Um, let me just go up and make sure I didn't miss any chats. Um, Nordstrom. The company I chose recently just merged. Um, so oh, that, I, if the company is on this list, uh, who mentioned that? Sorry, let me find um, Chris. If the company is on this list and they just merged, uh, please let us know. <laughs> um, a merger could make things more complicated, especially when you're looking um, at the annual reports. Um, most of the analysis you're going to do is going to be up until 2015, in terms of looking at where the company is in terms of the new and um, their costs, because it's gonna, that's going to be in their annual reports, and you won't have annual reports for this yet, um, since we're only halfway through. So that might not be a major problem, but it really depends on the company, and you should definitely um, talk to your instructor about that uh, in case it poses a problem for you. It's Tesla. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Um, oh, what a bummer. And I, I really like Tesla being on this list, so which is Solar City. Okay, um, thank you. I will. We will um, do something down merged. Okay. Well, good. Um, okay, and someone says Apple. So we'll talk about Tesla being on the list. Um, first, it'd be fine because if the merger after this year, but um, we might need to remove it. Um, would that be a good choice? I and Ellen and any other instructors on the line, feel free to chime in. Uh, I, Apple's not on this list, um, not because your instructor would say no, but they do have all different products that fit the bill for all of the things we're looking for. But because each product is so different, it sometimes makes um, the work a little bit overwhelming for students. You have to look at the computer market, you have to look at the tablet market, you look at the phone market, and those markets tend to be very different. So the people who make phones, Samsung, Kia, are very different than the people who make computers. But Apple's competing with a lot of different groups, and make your job harder in your paper. But it's not; it's still doable, and in your instructor definitely say yes to that one. What I normally tell people is focus on the leading product if you insist on doing that. Yeah. Apple focus on iPhones, yeah. and they can do a really kind of interesting analysis of that. Yes, yeah, it could be possible too. Um, yeah, I also wanted to mention for people because I get a lot of people that really want to do Amazon. Mm -hmm. The focus on the tablet line and the marketing scheme around the tablet line, which is kind of interesting work as well. Yeah, so that, that's another approach, too. And so any of these approaches, like Ellen has suggested, where you want to focus on one product of many that the company does, the lead product, um, just make sure you run that by your instructor, and they're okay with that, and they, that they know to expect that from your paper, too, because, you know, you come to with a paper like that, and they're like, well, what about the rest of the company? You know, avoid that, and make sure that everyone's on the same page. I was just insist they do that when they when they ask me if they want to do, if they want to do Apple I tell them do you have to focus on one of their product groups and that way I I don't get surprised and they know what they're supposed to do. Okay. Um. Some are asking to make sure you mute your mic when you're not speaking. Um. It's of great help. <laughs> have so much background noise. Um, so a couple of things that someone said about Samsung and um, just focusing on smartphones that um, as long as your instructor is okay with it, I think that that's a good choice. Definitely if it's the 
paper. Yep. Um, and someone asked about GE. GE is again of a very varied, very diverse product line. I mean, they have everything from light bulbs to engines. <laughs> so those are really different things. You're going to be writing a lot of different papers if you write about the whole of GE. Um, so you want to talk with your instructor if you're very passionate about doing GE. Maybe pick one product or one product line or one, you know, kind of silo within GE and just talk about those products um, instead of talking about the company as a whole because, you know, I really don't want this paper to be super long for you. You know, 10 pages, it's, you know, 7 to 9, but then when you add in graphs, you know, it tends to get to be maybe 10, 12 pages total. Um, graphs and visuals you add, not a lot of space. And the companies are really big and they have a lot going on. So um, we want to make your job harder than it needs to be. Poll, is Samsung a Korean company? Is I'm that... not sure about about that one being U.S. Um, it's a South Korean multinational. You did, okay. Yeah. So who, let me just make sure. So Martin, um, so Samsung is not a U.S.-based company. So um, just get with your instructor about that. If, you know, if, if they say that it's okay, um, again, the rule there is for you to have the information you need. Um, if you talk with your instructor about it and you both agree that that company is doable, they can waive that requirement, but you, you have to make sure that they're okay with it. If you already did that, great. You already did. So I just want to make sure. All right. It was approved. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And just for the rest of the group, so, you know, if they say, hey, Samsung's a great idea, if you like that idea, make sure you, you run it by your instructor. Um, so someone else chose Runs Inc. for their main focus is pest control industry that you work in. So, um, Rick, a lot of people, and maybe some people on the line are interested in this, um, would like to choose the company or the industry that they work in, which I think is great. You know, we want you guys to bring your prior knowledge to the class. Um, and we as your instructors, we learn a lot from that too. Um, the, the main risk with that is, and I don't know a lot about this company, I don't know anything about this company, I'll be honest, is if it's publicly traded. If it's not publicly traded, um, you won't have access to this wealth of information that your classmates do. Uh, it may put you at a disadvantage um, in some of the later parts of the of the course. So, um, you know, sometimes when you work for a company, you do have access to some information that some of the company wouldn't have access to. So again, that's something that you would probably want to talk with your instructor about to make sure that you'll have what you need if it's not publicly traded. Yes, Marissa. Marissa said she wrote about the bank that she worked for, and it was it was it was tough. Banks are tough, doable but tough. Um, but yeah, but you learn a lot, and you know, especially if that's the industry that you want to stay in. Um, you know, you could really gain a lot of insight into where you work. Selected Avon. I've seen students do really well with Avon. Yeah, I think um, in my experience, um, the papers I've seen were good with Avon. Yep. Thank you, guys. This is just this is a discussion. I was not expecting it to go in this direction, but I'm so glad you've all chiming in. This is wonderful. Um, so, can I ask a quick question? Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm still on Samsung. That is not a U.S. stock exchange. Company. Is that going to create problems? Is the data going to be recorded differently? Um, well, you know, it, I think there is the possibility of a problem. He did say his instructor um, right. approved it. So, you know, I would call any of my students against that. Yeah, um, that would be my concern. Because I don't want you to, to, I mean, you don't, today in week two of your class, you don't know if it's going to be a problem. And you might know until late. Um, We're not going to have the SEC reporting. That's going to be the biggest. Right. Uh, they do have annual reports that not be exactly like what our um, U.S. stock listed companies have. So there are companies from outside of the U.S. that are not, that are listed on U.S. stock exchange. So to do the same reporting, even though they're not headquartered here, um, but Samsung does not appear to be one. But yeah, it looks like Samsung's not. So um, some some food for thought. Um, 
you don't know if you've taken a look at that at other annual reports and seen how they look. Um, but um, so Thomas asked about um, extensor. Um, should I think about changing firms? Um, you, you talk more in detail with your instructor. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to give you guys advice, and Ellen and Bill are, are with me too. We don't want to override your instructor, but we do make sure that everyone starts off here need to be successful on, on your paper because um, it's challenging. So Accenture, um, I know a little bit about it because I used to work in consulting. My husband still works in consulting. It's going to be hard for you to find pricing information would be my first concern. Um, if you're in the industry and even then, uh, I'm not sure what it would be. I mean, you know, I've, they do more contract-based work, so they'll bid for a project and, you know, this is how much they say cost them, and so that's where I would really worry for you um, because there is going to be there are going to be sections of your paper that are really focused on the price of your product or service. And if you have that information, you might not be able to really speak to that section. Um, and then, Bill, what are your thoughts on that? I would be concerned if I couldn't identify something clearly that I could do the demand analysis about. Right. I, I don't know how you would do that in that kind of industry. That would be rough. There are easier to follow than that, I think. So, and a lot of you are messaging me privately, which is fine. But but no one else can, you know, the um, Bill and Ellen can't can't see them as well. But um, so, mentioned that he has um, contact with so Accenture. And that might help too. But again. The, the pricing side, the demand side, um, it might be a little bit difficult to to quantify and to get the resources that you need. Um, and we we only have seven weeks now. So that, you know, in your final project is due in week seven, and we're in week two, so we really have five and a half more weeks. So we don't want anyone here fighting an uphill battle. This is you know our advice to you. We've seen students maybe pick that don't fit well with this paper and regret it. Um, that's pretty much <laughs> what I would say about that one. Um, I don't, you know, usually business to business firms are, are very tricky to, like I said, to, to get the demand numbers for um, and to get pricing information for. So it might be difficult to fill out those sections. Okay, well, you know, we are almost at nine o'clock and we'll have to pivot to macroeconomics here in a few minutes. Um, but I did just want to we, um, go back to our oh, sorry, wrong screen and um, make sure we all got to see the um, the, the other element of your introduction. So the first one was the purpose. We went over that. So everyone knows that you know if you're unsure about what to include in the out in describing the purpose of your paper, um, you can go to that final project document, and that will give you the bones of the paper that you can sort of summarize, and then you can add the detail, the real meat. You know, later once you submit your final um, draft in week seven. So the second part is the history and overview. So this, most of this you're going to get from your company website, your company um, annual report, things like that, um, about where the company started, what they started doing. A lot of companies start with one sort of product or service and evolve over time as demand changes, you know, just the general environment um, changes in their market. So you want to capture all that history and kind of give a summary of where they are now, what they're doing, what they're selling, what they're creating. Um, so overall, this, we would expect this to be between a full one to two pages. If it's less than one full page, um, try to see if you can add some more detail, especially in that history and overview section. This time, I have one last question um, here in the chat. Do we run five-year trends in the SEC? Um, I'm not sure she asked that question. Um, we we Security and Exchange Commissions, but um, in terms of 
five-year trends. We don't